958. Here's your sleeping puppy. With the bandana, I don't know, it's just some leaves. I think. Of course, all the states I've been to. Book is the last of the Traders Game series. Anyway, not the Kremlin, St. Basil, Basil, whatever, Cathedral. Reason I keep on pronouncing it wrong is because I'm recording these videos in a big black. So probably eh, before anyone has watched them, anyone's really discovered my channel. So you're probably discovering it years and years after this. So it's not that I'm ignoring your comments, is I can't see it yet. Unless you're watching this video, like, now oh, and comment, like, the day after it goes up. Anyway, um... Today, it's going to be Joshua Chapter 3, 4, and... Uh, and the first verse of verse 5. Yeah, that's... There's going to be a lot today. Uh, crossing the Jordan. Now just, just a thing, you might be like, crossing the Jordan isn't that easy, like, didn't you say it was barely a river, even back then? Yes. Unless it's, it's high season, during the rainy season, or flood season, then it's a raging torrent that n no sane person would even step a, would put a toe in. That's what it is during this event. So keep that in mind. And if you want to know um, what that looks like, you can go up, go on YouTube and, well, search the video. Or if I'm feeling kind enough, I might leave a link in a pinned comment. But it's insane. And that's it all, mostly. Train and dance. Just imagine what it was when the Jordan was back to what it used to, or closer to what it used to be. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be something. More. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim, S H I T T I M, and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. <clears throat> After three days, the officers went through the camp, giving orders to the people. <clears throat> when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest crying, no, carrying it, crying it, What's my brain thinking? I don't know. Is that even dyslexia or something? It's just weirdness. You are to move out from your positions. So I can't say dyslexia that to save my life. And follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you all <coughs> have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 200 cubits. That is about 3,000 feet or 900 meters. About because, well... Uh, also, yeah, 300 feet is pretty far, but up. Oh, it but it's a proclamation because cubit changed over time and place and stuff and don't know we use this anymore so don't know exactly the conversion rate conversion rate so it's all best guess if you want to know more about the weights and measures 
of the of Biblical Times, there's a video in up on the channel next to the Google Docs link called List of Stuff. It's the little YouTube play button icon. It takes you to a video going over all the stuff. Anyway, between you and the ark, do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Concentrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass uh, on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I... <clears throat> begin today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel in the eyes of all Israel so they may know that I am with you and I no that I am with you as I was with Moses tell the priests who carry the ark of the covenant when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters go and stand in the river Yes, if you have seen the video, if not, go look up it now. That's possibly even worse. It's what they're being told to go stand in the middle of. Yeah. Yeah. Joshua said to the Israelites, "Come here and have no, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you are." Come, come here and listen to the words of the, Lord your, of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Hiv Hivites, no wait, the Canaanites, the Hittite, Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Ge Gerasites, the Amorites, one M, the, and the Jebusites. See the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord <coughs> of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe, and as soon as the priest who carry the ark of the Lord to the Lord, no, ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, Set foot in the Jordan, its <coughs> waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand in a, up in a heap. <coughs> so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Oh yeah, wait, this is also an objection by skeptics. Think, oh, it's easy to cross the Jordan. You don't need a mirror. It's during flood stage. The Jordan, Jordan is a raging torrent. So yes, this is necessary. Your argument is stupid like all your other ones. Just not reading in context, not reading the entire thing, just cherry-picking whatever you want, twisting the words, accusing people who argue against you of the exact same thing that you're doing, <laughs> repeating the same brain-dead arguments over and over again, thinking you're making a point when you are not. That goes to each and every skeptic on the internet. If you watch them, 
Sorry, but these people really don't know what they're talking about. None of them. None of them. They're going to claim they do. They're going to try to debunk me. But I know all their arguments already. They're not going to say anything new or original. They're not. They're going to claim that I'm changing the Bible. They're changing the Bible. They're going to claim I'm cherry picking. They're the ones doing so. And if you're an atheist and offended, don't be! Don't be! I'm making fun of this. I'm going after the skeptics, not the atheist. There are good atheists who have actually far more logical reasons for not believing in God than a skeptic ever would. Actually, atheists, these atheists, are sick and tired of the internet skeptic! And the new, these new skeptics thinking they're awesome are just as bad, thinking they're terrible. So, in other words, internet skeptics just have no idea what they're talking about. So let's move on. When the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the Pharisees ca carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan was, now the Jordan is at flood stage. See? Did I add anything to it? And I said with that flood stage? No. Now the Jordan is at flood stage. You know what they're going to do? They're going to cut it off before then. Say that there's no proof. And there's going to be people like, yeah, you, you said there's no proof. And not even going to check that they are wrong. But here is Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. Proving them wrong. Go to sleep. All during the har during harvest, yet as I'm not. I'm talking normal. I'm talking the same time volume I always do. As soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at the town called at a town called Adam A D M in the vicinity of Zer Neth Z A R E T H A N. But I know what they're going to do now. They're going to I just say, well why isn't there any records of this? First off the Bible duh. Second that's our argument for silence if you don't to believe the Bible doesn't mean there is any. <laughs> Especially since how little we have on ancient sources, you really can't make any point there. All the water flowing down to the all the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabia R A R A B A H that is, the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite Jericho, the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant, <sighs> Ark of the Covenant, I'm talking just how I normally do, of the Lord, stopped in the middle of the Jordan, and stood on dry ground, all 
Israel passed by until the whole nation had completely crossed on dry ground. <coughs> Mark this as the second time God has completely divided a body of water in half. Right, like, well, the first time was a sea. Yes, this time it was a raging tor torrent. When the whole nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, right from right where the priests are standing, carry them over with you and put them down in place where you stay tonight. I go, where is this? It, it could just been knocked down over the centuries. You no, know, the old scattered thing, Israel being ruined. destruction anything could have happened to it they go look stones <sighs> just because it isn't there to well, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist or no did that's not how that works so Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, over be Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone in, no stone, on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. <coughs> Wait, you're sending 12 men or two to take us. Well, I guess, like, don't grab two. So each grab one. Amber. To serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, What do these stones mean? Tell them, tell them the f that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed the Jordan. The waters of Jericho were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. They are to be a memorial for Israel. But things didn't quite go the way that way. So, um, yeah. There isn't a contradiction. You're just trying to make one out of nothing. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the, as the Lord told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Joshua set up the twelve stones that had been <coughs> or Joshua also set up twelve stones okay yes that's a big translation to in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood and they were no and they are there to this day Are they in there anymore? Probably not. Something probably happened to them. Could the modern day, day nation of Israel go and build up a new one? No, because um, they don't actually apparently control. 
fully the land that is under Jericho, so no, they actually can't. Although I don't know Palestine would object to them building a stone pillar. I think they might be a little confused, but anyway, now the priest who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until every until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua w was done by the people, as Moses had directed Joshua, the people hurried over. Just as Moses had directed Joshua, the people hurried over. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as all of them had crossed over, the ark of the Lord and the priest came to the other side, while the people watched, the men of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh crossed over, ready for battle, in front of the Israelites, as Moses had directed them. About forty thousand, armed for battle, crossed over before the Lord to the plains of Jericho for war. That day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they stood in awe of him all the days of his life, just as they had stood in awe of Moses. <laughs> then the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priests carrying the ark of the covenant law to come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests, Come out, come up out of the Jordan. And the priest came up out of the river, carrying the ark of the covenant to the covenant of the Lord. No sooner had they set their foot, set their feet on dry ground, than the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at, at flood stage as before. <sighs> on the tenth day of the first month. The people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gaul on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Galilee, no Gal, G I L G E A L, the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask their pre parents, what do these stones mean? Then tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground, for the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had cro crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea, or Sea Reeds. When he dried it up before us, until we had crossed over, he did this so that all of the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful, and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Hmm. Now when all the Amorite, one M, because there's two M and I own a, well, differentially, kings west of the Jordan, and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites, they, until they crossed or another textual translation, we <coughs> for a reason they might not think the Jordan stopping was a noble event to write down. Or since what's about to happen to all of them they might have never had a chance to <coughs>
Yes, there can be events that happen without any primary, with only one primary source. <laughs> Especially in ancient times. Or no primary sources. There might be events that happen that we have no evidence for. <laughs> and we will never know that happened. <laughs> for who knows what reasons. Probably like the burning of Al the library of Alexandria. Okay. Had crossover. Their hearts melted in fear. And they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. I think she's asleep now. I don't know why she came in here. I wasn't talking any louder. Ah. <sighs>